It really is great to be with you this afternoon. I uh, live close by, I live in Highland, so it's not a big trip for me, but I love this industry. I've been in the speaking industry for a long time now. Uh, in fact, I'm going to talk about that in a second, but uh, I love this industry. It's a great day. I'm passionate about this. I've got a lot of friends in this room, so it's great to be here. And how often, Jeff, I hope, I, I don't know you, but I hope you won't hate me for this, but how often do you get to speak after someone who's dressed exactly like you are? I don't know if you guys noticed what Jeff and I are wearing, but uh, we got the memo. There you go. All right. That's it. So, Steve, I'm glad you mentioned art because art's really an important part of the East Speaker story and, and what we're all about. Uh, art was a very successful speaker. CPAE, as Steve mentioned, the year Art passed away, which was 2002, Art was the incoming national president as well. Very involved. You know, I'm sure that had he not passed away, he would be in this room with us tonight, being a part of this meeting. Uh, but Art had a technical background, and East Speakers was born because Art got mad. Art got mad because he started to see technology, especially internet technology, changing industries. And he saw how it was drastically changing or just making lifestyle improvements for people in other businesses, but nobody was bringing that to bear on the industry that Art was passionate about, which was the speaking industry. So Art decided to do something about it, as Steve mentioned, and, and uh, grabbed a hold of me. This was back in 1999, Art and I started East Speakers. You guys recognize this album a little bit? Yeah? I did not know that. If I had more time, we'd have a moment of silence for Prince, but I'm going to have to move on here. Wow. Formally known. Yes, thank you. Wow. Okay. Um, I like this music. All right. Anyway, so 1999, we had Prince back then. Uh, 1999, I'm just setting the stage here a little bit, taking you back in time. Harrison Ford that year got replaced as the sexiest man alive by this guy. Big ear. All right, 1999, Donald Trump, his hair was pretty much the same. I kind of expected something different. <laughs> the hair is there. He was country when country wasn't cool. 1999, this is what Art's speaking calendar looked like. You guys have seen these things. You buy them at Office Depot. They're about this big, right? To hang on the wall. And Art and his office assistant, Donnie, this was how they kept track of his holds, kept track of his confirmed events. And it was kind of inconvenient because in order to use this calendar, you had to be sitting in Art's office looking at the east wall to do it. And Art wasn't in his office very, very often. And so it, this was part of what was really frustrating for Art and part of the genesis of East Speakers. Back in 1999, still, there were two ways that speakers got booked. <coughs> if a meeting planner knew who you were and knew your phone number, or knew your website address, if you had a website, that was new back then, right? If a meeting planner knew who you were and knew how to reach you, they'd call you direct Bob Trump. If they didn't know who you were or how to reach you, they would call a speaker's bureau who would flip open their Rolodex and they would broker the deal. The speaker's bureau would call you and uh, broker the deal between you and the buyer. That was back in 1999. And then, around that time, some interesting things started to happen. We had companies like Amazon, eBay, E-Trade, Expedia. These companies came in and showed us, everybody, that there is a much nicer way to do transactions, to do business. Amazon, I don't know how many of you guys have experienced this too, but my Christmas shopping is so much better because of Amazon. I don't go out anymore. It's just boxes showing up at my house every day until the 25th, right? And then eBay comes along and they make it easy for us to sell all the junk we bought on Amazon that we don't want anymore. <laughs> E-Trade, we don't need a stockbroker anymore. Expedia, obviously travel is much different. Booking the travel is much different now than it used to be, right? So the model for booking speakers is changing as well. And it's following the same pattern that we've seen in other industries. We still have direct. We still have via bureaus. But we're adding in a third way for speakers to get booked. And this is partly future, but this is 
also here right now. It's young and it's growing. And that is via speakers directories. Speakers directories give buyers a new way to research, find, and hire speakers. It's a third model. It's been around a little bit, but it's still something that buyers are learning about. It's growing. But you can imagine if someone was giving a talk back in 99 about Expedia, this brand new way that someday lots of people might book travel this way, right? But that would be a pretty good bet on Expedia. The same model is going to happen in the speaking industry. It's already started. Just watch for that to grow and grow and grow. Now, I want to share with you one other bit of backstory here about directories, and that is this. The people who hire you are more and more often not professional meeting planners. This is a trend that we're seeing. See if you can be not in your heads. More and more often, the people who hire you is a CEO's admin, right? Who just the CEO said, find us a speaker, make it happen, right? More and more often, the person who hires you is the volunteer president of an association who got his He's doing the job this year, right, to find a speaker for their national meeting. Next year, it's going to be a different president, right, another amateur in. The nice thing about directories is that they're great for pros. Pros love them, but it's really nice for the amateurs as well. I was trying to get rid of that ring, and I made it worse. Still hear me okay? Good. So speaker directories are great for pros, but they also are a great benefit to these amateurs who don't have a big index of speakers already in their heads like the pros do, who don't maybe even understand the contracting process. They don't understand that you want to deposit before you're going to confirm the day. These are all new things to them, and directories just smooth this whole process out for the newbies, but the pros love it as well. It's great for them, and it's great for you as speakers too. In fact, uh, I, wanted, I want you to envision in your mind for a moment that we break for dinner here, and while you are sitting at the table, a chirp comes in on your phone. And that chirp says, uh, hey, you've gotten two new holes today via speakers directories that you're listed on. And do you want me to send the standard thank you reply? tap here, or would you like to type a, type a custom message because you can see who it is that placed the hold on your calendar. You want to reply with something custom. It just pushes out to your phone, a couple of taps, maybe a, a custom note, and you just took care of a couple of holds. And they feel great because they got responded to so quickly after they placed a hold on your calendar, after they showed interest. Imagine, if you will, that next time you get off of a plane and put your phone out of airplane mode, that a couple of chirps come through, a couple of push notifications. One of them says, hey, that contract you've been working on with Company X to hire you to speak? Well, while you were on the plane, they confirmed the date. They signed your contract digitally. That's a bag attached to your event. And they also paid the deposit electronically. That's going to hit your bank account tomorrow. That happened while you were on the plane. Okay? Nice vision, right? This is great. That future is pretty, uh, that future is not here right now, but we're working on it. In fact, we're already about 90% there, and there were programmers working today on the last 10%. It's in progress. This is coming it. pretty soon. I want it. You want it? All right. I was worried I was out of time. <laughs> I, I, 10 uh, minutes. Okay. You, you raised your hand. That made me worry. Okay. But you want it. Good. Right? This is great. The cool thing is this kind of ease of transaction doesn't come at the expense of the buyer. They love it too. It's good for everybody, right? It's the same thing that's happened with Amazon, Expedia, E-Trade. It's coming to our industry and it's going to be here pretty soon. So, speakers directories. I think everyone's pretty familiar with speakers directories, but I just want to make sure we're on the same page with this so that you understand what this is. A speakers directory is a website. It's a collection of profiles of speakers. Here's somebody you guys may or may not recognize. Speakers profiles have a photo, a bio, they've got your fees, they've got video. It's really everything that a buyer needs to know about you. It's your opportunity to sell yourself to the buyers. So a speaker's directory is a collection of these profiles. It's also, importantly, if you look at the left side of your screen, it provides, think about Amazon, great search tools that let a buyer who's trying to research and find the right speaker for their audience, come in and use things like keyword searching, price searching, 
They can check availability. They can look for local speakers. They can do all this in the directory. You can imagine trying to do that with Google, right? This is why directories are so popular, because that sort of filtering that you can do in a few minutes on a good directory would be hours and hours and hours of Googling to try to put the same thing together. So you can see why directories are so popular and growing. <coughs> yes? Um, I'm Brandy, so everyone probably already knows this question that I'm going to ask. But what are some good directories? Like, how do you find a directory that's listed? That's a great question. That I will, can I answer that for you afterwards? Yeah, yeah okay. you definitely can. Very good question. Okay. Uh, actually, this next slide is going to address that just a little bit. Uh, eSpeaker sits at an interesting nexus. We have customers that are speakers. Our customers are also speakers bureaus. And our customers are also meeting planners. They're the people who are hiring speakers. We, all three of those groups are served by eSpeakers. That gives us a really cool perch to watch the industry and, and, um, and learn about the different groups. And one of the things that we've learned as we've watched meeting planners, and between my business partner Joe and I, we talk to hundreds of meeting planners every year. We sit down with them, we're one on one, we talk to them about how they form their buying decision. We talk to them about where they're looking for speakers, how they learn about new speakers. We learn all these things because we want to help connect you with them for the right audiences. One of the things that we have learned about these meeting planners and their pattern of researching speakers to find the right one for their meeting is, at this moment, and we're hoping directories is something that eSpeakers is a part of that's part of our service offering. And so we are moving directories to become the de facto way that buyers find speakers. But right now, they're sort of using a hybrid of directories and Googling. And what that looks like is that whether they find you on a directory or via Google, they will end up checking out the neighborhoods you hang out in. Because if they don't know you already, if you're not a household name, they've got to figure out if you're credible. They have to figure out if you're a legitimate speaker. One of the ways they do that is to find the company that you keep. So a couple of directories that you might show up in, if you are a member of this chapter, uh, I think a professional member at least, you're listed in the Rocky Mountain, or sorry, the Mountain West chapter, you speak Rocky Mountain. The Mountain West chapter. If you are a national member, you show up on the NSA national website. Incidentally, the speaker directory on the NSA national site is their highest traffic page. No, more, no page on their site gets more traffic than their speaker directory does. People are looking for credible speakers from the NSA. Some other directories, Smart Meetings is a group that uh, caters to event organizers. MPI has a speakers directory. That's Meeting Professionals International, the largest association of the people who hire you. MPI's got a speaker directory that you can be a part of. Washington Speakers Bureau. Some of you recognize that name. One of the biggest, most established bureaus in the world who until last year only dealt with celebrities. They only dealt with $20,000 speakers and above. They just started a new brand extension for themselves where they are selling speakers under 10,000 through a directory. This is a very cool opportunity. In fact, if you're interested in learning what it takes to be a part of the Washington Speakers Bureau under 10,000 directory, let me know. I can tell you what it takes to, to be a part of that or at least to qualify for it. But, so what buyers will do is they'll get on and they'll Google, they'll see what directories you appear in, they'll make some uh, the credibility just adds up as they find you on MPI and Smart Meetings and maybe Washington Speakers Bureau and Mountain West and NSA National. Layers of credibility. They're impressed with the company you keep and eventually the scale tips and they pick up the phone. A lot of times they're even back at your own website by this time. But the scale is tipped. They pick up the phone or as we're working to do, they'll fill out the online request so that you get that pushed through to your phone. But either way, they're going to get connected with you. All right. Now that I've talked about the importance of speakers' directories and your own website, your online presence, as in the future of hiring speakers, because it's going online, I'm going to share with you four things, four of the mistakes that I see speakers make that keeps them from having an online presence that really attracts buyers. You can do things, I got a friend in the speaking business, Terry Watson, some of you probably know him. He, he likes the phrase that says, repel them like skunk oil, right? 
And so Terry, Terry told me one time, he says, Dave, I see speakers do this, and it just repels buyers like skunk oil. Okay? I want to help you avoid that. I want you to attract buyers. I want them to like your online presence and want to hire you because of that. I'm going to move through very quickly. The first thing is video. Video, video, video. You wouldn't buy a car without test driving it. You wouldn't buy <laughs> perfume without opening the bottle and taking a sniff. Buyers will not hire you without seeing you on stage in front of an audience, whether that's in person or much more often through video. You should have video on your website. You need video on your profile. You want several short clips. Okay, video, number one. Number two, how many of you recognize this screen? Amazon has trained us to be a review-based buyer, right? Man, we love reviews. As human beings, we just want to know what other people thought about this before we make a decision. I did some research. I found a few different studies that came up with different numbers about how often reviews influence a purchase decision. <coughs> and whether you take the high number or the low number, it's a bunch. We are influenced by others' opinions. Reviews are critical. You should have them sprinkled throughout your own website. And any directory you appear in should have between 12 and 20 reviews on there. Okay? Next, your availability. As a speaker, your inventory is your calendar. You wouldn't book a flight on an online airline site if you had to make a phone call to find out if the flight was full or not. Right? Don't make buyers have to jump through hoops to find out your availability. Share it. I, I, the, there are some cons. People say, I'm not busy and it's going to look like I never do anything. I've got some answers for that that we don't have time for. But reduce friction for your buyers. Share your availability. If you have a form on your website that collects inquiry information, uh, here's an example of a plugin that eSpeakers provides called the Book Me Now plugin. And I'm going to expand that middle section right there. That middle section, as they're filling out the inquiry form, it does a live check on your calendar to let them know if you're available on the date they're interested in. So they might see your book, and so they'll say, well, our, our, our show goes through the next day, too, so they'll put it that day, and that one's available. Same as with an airline and, and availability on flights. So give them access to your inventory. Make it easy for them to, to hire you. The final thing I want to uh, share with you is number four. This one is tied with having no video as the most damaging thing you can do on your profile. If you want to repel buyers like skunk oil, get this one wrong. Okay? Pop quiz. Is this statement true or false? Okay, good. We got some people who can sniff out a trick question in here. Good. What should your profile or your website be about? Them. About them. Okay? And it's so tempting because on speaker profiles, it feels like it should be about us. This, this profile is me. It's got my picture. It should be about me, about the cool things I've done, about my life story. And there is a place for that, and that is important. It should be on there, but it should be below where you talk to the buyers about what you're doing for them. Where you talk to the buyers about how their audience will be better after they've heard you. So there's your four things. Video, share your inventory, reviews, and make sure that your marketing material leads with audience benefits. This is a great time to be in this business. I've looked at research from American Express and from Meeting Professionals International. Both of them say that meetings are happening more often and will for the next few years, and that the audiences at those meetings are bigger. And when my ears hear that, that makes me think more speakers and better speakers, right? For having more meetings and bigger meetings. That's great for this room. Those meetings are going to be booked online more and more, and I hope now you feel a little more ready for that online future that's happening.